God, it's so cold. I can't mm. even speak properly. Hi guys, Chris here from Coach My Skills. Coming today here with a, another short video for you. I've had a couple of requests about this one, so today I'm doing soccer fitness. Now, there are many aspects to soccer fitness. You've got things like speed, endurance, stamina, agility, uh, strength. So, only today is what I want to focus on is building that base fitness. So, if you're starting from like uh, an off season and you're starting to work into a season that's upcoming and you're in pre season with that and you want to start from the bottom and try and build that base up, that's the sort of fitness that I'm talking about now. So, I want to just talk through three types, three different types of training that you can do to help improve that uh, soccer fitness. So just before you get started with any fitness work, of course it's important with uh, with these things to warm up properly. Now I'm not going to talk about a warm up today, maybe we'll do that in another video, but make sure that you warm up properly. Um, certain things like dynamic movements are perfect for this sort of fitness work, so make sure you do that and avoid any injuries. Now I apologize for the wind. so hopefully it doesn't affect the sound. Now the first training type that we'll speak about is continuous training. Now the clue is in the title with this one, continuous, as you can see there. So it's a, a form of training that is a low aerobic training, so you're doing it at low intensity, but you do it for a longer period of time. So that's something like, you know, if you're going to the gym, you're 30 minutes on a bicycle, uh, a low intensity, keep it going for 30, 40 minutes. It's a long period. So this is a good sort of training to begin with. It's a baseline training. So for the first, I would recommend for the first one to two weeks of your, your initial training of your off season, you stick to continuous training to try and build that base up of your fitness. After you've built that base up of your fitness after one, two, two to weeks, you can start moving on to these other different types of training I'm about to speak about. So after having been doing that continuous training for a period of one to two weeks, the second type of training that you can now incorporate into your off-season sort of program is fight leg training. Believe it or not, that fight leg training means speed play in Swedish. <laughs> of all languages. So for me, fight leg runs are like the holy grail for soccer fitness. What they are is basically it's like a small surge of increased speed and then you follow that up with coming back to your normal zone and recovering and then trying to repeat again. So it's very much specific to a football game where you're, you're making short dashes, short, uh, short sprints, and then you want to try and recover as quickly as possible. So they're perfect for football and something that you need to incorporate to build that soccer fitness base up. Now to start off with the, uh, the fight leg runs, I would recommend just doing things like a 20 minute, a 20 minute timed, uh, timed run and you can do a, a say a three minute jog and then do a fight leg run for one minute where you increase the speed uh, run at sort of 70 to 80 percent of your maximum that's all it is it's not a full out max, uh, maximum run you're not trying to hit the red line of things you're not trying to push yourself to the limits it's it's at a good pace like that and then after you've done your minute you're then going to recover again for those three minutes so it's it's like i said it's very uh, specific for football it's very relevant so uh, it's something you should definitely incorporate in your training
But the uh, you got the first uh, continuous training. The second thing is your fire leg training, and then you want to incorporate the last thing that I think is essential for football players as well is interval training. Now, interval training could seem a little bit similar to the fire leg training, but I can assure you it's it's not. And what that is is a higher intense for shorter periods of time, but the rest is almost equivalent to the the amount of time that you're working. So, for example, you might work at for a high intensity of 90%, so you're almost close to your maximum for a minute, but then your rest is only a minute or a minute and a half. So it's, it's a lot more intense, but it's a lot shorter period. So a little bit like the fire leg training as well. With the interval training, it's important to focus as well on the recovery. So it's like when you're recovering, your body is also adapting as well. So it is part of the process that when you put in the work in and you're recovering, you focus on the recovery as well, because as you're doing it, your body makes changes, you're becoming a lot more stronger and fitter, and this is perfect for football as well. So it's important that you build up through that, and I'll show you that as well, that you build from the continuous to your fight leg into your interval, and then you start to incorporate them all, and that will really give you a, a, a really good basic ground fitness for football for moving forward into things that are more specific like speed agility all those other th uh, other things that you'll have as well that you can focus on on another time So that's the three types of training that I'd want you, that I'd recommend to, to do, especially if you're doing an off-season program. To the people that requested this video, thank you very much. I picked probably the worst day to do it. It's so cold, and uh, yeah, but I hope that it's, uh, it's useful for you. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you feel sorry for me standing in the cold, give me a thumbs up as well, and I'll see you in the next video. Even get to bronze